Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to the Ask Rebecca radio show. Thanks for joining me. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and New Year. I took off the last couple of weeks to work through some grief and sadness that came up for me during the holidays. I had been feeling it build since my son's birthday in October and then even more so shortly before Thanksgiving. And then the floodgates just opened up officially during the Christmas and New Year break. I just had kept myself so busy with clients up until that point to avoid dealing with the realization that this would be the first holiday season without my son. Thankfully, I have amazing family, friends, and clients who are supportive and understanding. And thankfully, I have grown and evolved enough to know that I have to allow myself to feel things and move through them. Uh, I basically need to practice what I preach, right? So I am happy to be back. Let's get right into this brand new decade year, month, and week. It is going to be a very transformative decade for the entire planet. Expect a continual process of collapse with the old system and a rebuilding of the new. Everything from politics, government, technology, religion, spirituality, perception, duality, and much, much more will be affected. And you'll see more earth changes happening as well which are connected to the grand solar minimum and the vibrational fields Earth is moving into. It's going to affect everything and everyone for the next decade and beyond. These are really, really exciting times, even though it may feel like it's not that great. (laughs) Um, We'll get through the tough times. We'll get through the challenges, but the end result is going to be just fantastic. So this year, 2020, is the building of the foundation of the next decade, and you are anchoring the physical manifestation of a new reality. It will require you to choose to step off the path of the dying world based in fear and duality in order to return to your original divine blueprint based in love and oneness. I received this vision about a week ago when I was guided to stop what I was doing and sit in meditation. I received an incredibly powerful download of information, uh, but the only part of it that I had immediate access to for sharing was the original divine blueprint of our energetic and physical bodies. I was shown the manipulations that took place long ago to keep us from knowing the truth of our divine origins. And all of it is going to be revealed over the next decade and maybe a little bit longer. But really, I just feel like the next 10 years are just going to be explosive. This month brings some really positive possibilities and happenings with being productive, strategizing, planning, commitments, and getting things accomplished. It will also push you to journey inward into your emotional realms. The areas of focus may be the home, mothers and fathers, whether biological or not, business, finance, career, taxes, long-term plans, launches, and major life-changing decisions. This month will also be challenging in the areas that I just mentioned um, with the decade ahead, But there's also going to be some unexpected drama, stress, life-changing news, and events that could occur thanks to the lunar eclipse. Um, It's a lunar eclipse full moon happening on January 10th or 11th, depending on where you live. Plus, we have some waves of energy that have been hitting us due to a coronal mass ejection from the sun, which is supposed to hit us more intensely around the 11th. These energies can bring about increased earthquake activity, which we can already see happening in Puerto Rico, Russia, and South America. Literally every hour somewhere in the world, there is an earthquake that's happening from magnitudes of 2.0 up to 6.4, which was reported in Puerto Rico, and I think Russia was 6.3. So there's increased activities. Um, there's several websites that you can go and look up this information all on your own and do the research, uh, really just do the research. 
um, so that you can figure out, figure it out on your own. Uh, tomorrow, we also move into a new 28-day moon cycle, which I will discuss on next week's show. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information. Quick admin note before I get into this week's intuitive messages. Those of you local to Orlando, I am hosting another Aura Photography and Chakra Balancing event Saturday, January 18th. There are still a few time slots available, so if you're interested, be sure to get added to my email list by texting Ask Rebecca to phone number 22828, or you can text me at 407 374 3133. Or you can follow the link in the description box if you are watching this on my YouTube channel. Also, save the date for February 8th for another meditation and mimosas meet and greet. And this one you'll be able to join through live video for the meditation if you can't make it in person. And you can drink your own mimosas at your house right? Instead of coming over here and drinking mimosas. So you can still still celebrate and interact with everyone, even though you won't be here physically. Uh, lastly, if you'd like to receive monthly and weekly intuitive messages for your Zodiac sign for $5 a month, or perhaps any other streaming services that I offer where I talk about the ascension and things going on with the planet. I'd appreciate the, the support on my Patreon channel so that I can create more content for everyone and support my family. The website is www.patreon.com backslash askrebecca. And again, you can text me or reach out to me and I'm happy to share the links and information and it will also be in the description box of the YouTube channel. All right, let's get into what you can expect from tonight, January 9th through to, through to January 16th as an overall theme and then areas of love, work, finances, health, and spirituality. General themes. This week feels like there is an abundance of energy and things happening. You may be pulled from one thing to another. It feels like a very busy and chaotic week. You may have a bunch of things going on in your life, in multiple areas of your life, needing some sort of attention from you. Do your best to stay grounded and balanced. Some of you could also see an increase in finances and or prosperity in other forms besides money or material items, right? So prosperity is more than just financial. Um, so yeah, lots of things. Just work, love, home, family, friends, all of it is going to need your attention in some way or some form this week. And as previously discussed with the overall theme for the decade, this week brings more transformation mentally, physically, and emotionally. You could be experiencing some transformative events from minor to major. You could see some doors opening while others close or are in the process of closing. So there's a lot of positive and maybe some challenging aspects to this energy. I was also seeing the center of a labyrinth. I feel like this could mean different things for different people, but the overall interpretation that I have is that you are halfway to the finish line with whatever life situations that may be happening for you right now. So whatever you're going through, whatever you are, and, and going through in the positive and the negative. So if you're stressed out about your career and you're trying to make changes, just know that it's happening. You're in the process of having to move, know that you'll get through it, right? So no matter where you are, you're in the halfway point of it and you're going to come out the other side just fine. Um, I also see maybe some of you in a labyrinth. So perhaps you find one to walk and contemplate, which will be very healing for you. And I actually recommend for a few of you, that's exactly what you should do. And if you don't have a labyrinth to uh, go to, you can maybe just go for a walk. I just feel like you need to walk it out. Uh, I also can't help but feel maybe one or two of you may end up even watching the movie with David Bowie, The Labyrinth, and it could be because I'm talking about it, so it might spark a memory and go, yeah, I need to go watch that. Um, 
You may also be giving and or receiving criticism, judgments, pushiness, bossiness, and other types of controlling behavior. You may also end up throwing a pity party for yourself due to some emotionally emotional energies being triggered to be purged. You may also be stuck in daydreaming and wishful thinking about what you wish you had. It will be important for you to stay present in the moment and actually focus on what is and count blessings for what you do have, because otherwise you're going to create negative um, manifestations for yourself. Work for those of you employed, the energies are primed for some potential conflicts and questioning the security of your work situation. You could also be hyper focused on how much you do not like your job or what steps you plan on taking to find a job you do like. So, again, there's going to be mixed energies. And then for some of you, it's just business as usual and you're not affected by this energy at all. It's going to affect you in a different area of your life. Um, those of you that are unemployed and looking for a job, I do feel like the only thing I was picking up on is to practice humility in your interview, be humble and you'll land the job. And there's also a caution about contracts. Be sure to thoroughly read any non-disclosures, confidentiality and non-competes before you sign them. And if you don't understand what you're reading, don't be afraid to say, hey, I'm going to take this to an attorney to take a look at. You don't want to sign something if you don't know what you're signing. And especially when it comes to non-competes, because you could be locking your life away for years and years after you quit or get fired from a job. And, you know, again, read the fine print. Love for those of you in committed relationships and dating seriously. There's a potential for some mild conflict this week. There's also the possibility some of you will be receiving reality checks when it comes to your expectations in love uh, and of people. <laughs> you may end up taking a deep look at yourself and the cold hard truth of your role when it comes to love. Are you settling? Are you putting energy into someone who isn't available and isn't reciprocating what you're giving to them? Are your, uh, your expectations unrealistic and too high based on your list of wants and needs and desires? Are there walls that you have up and you're telling yourself that, you know, you want deep, committed um, love, but then you're self-sabotaging and you haven't worked through past pains and you're projecting those onto your partner and you're punishing your partner for things that someone else did in the past. So I really feel like this is an evaluation period where you're getting real with yourself and it might be a little challenging because I feel like the words cold hard truth kept coming to mind um, and I just feel like you got to take a look at that and the, you guys that are country fans out there go listen to George um, oh my gosh, I can't think of his last name now, but there's a song called The Cold Hard Truth and it's really, really good. I'm not a big country fan, but there's certain country music I really dig. Anyway, uh, those of you looking for love, I'm not really picking up much on anything else uh, for you except that you need to get out and mingle. Finances feel stable and some of you may be tackling some issues head on and coming up with a plan. Um, Ooh, Dave is the best. He just nailed it. It is George Jones is the uh, country singer that has a song called The Cold Hard Truth. It's very, very good. Okay. Uh, lost track of where I was there. Finances. Stable. And some of you may be tackling some issues head on and coming up with a plan. Some will be setting goals and planning for your financial futures. Uh, a few of you may end up overextending yourself financially, so I would just caution you uh, to make sure that you're not going crazy and overextending, I feel like, is maybe racking up some credit card debt and just spending money that you really don't have. So just be easy. And the financial future planning, I feel like some of that is focused around retirement, but I also feel like some of it is for... Maybe you're wanting to buy a house in the future or wanting to, um, you know, purchase something major. So you're basically streamlining your, your funds and budgeting and figuring that out. And then I also feel like there's a little bit of a connection with college funds. 
So lots of financial stuff happening. I feel for the most part, again, it feels pretty stable and it feels like it's flowing. Um, again, the only caution is really to be careful that you're not extending yourself um, financially by spending too much. Health, you may be stressed and tired and frustrated. Some of you could be pushing yourself extra hard with working out and lifestyle changes. And some of you could be seeking counseling services. Hit me up if you're interested in some intuitive life coaching. I'm more than happy to help out. It's my thing. I love it. Uh, so let me help you. <laughs> and the uh, going hard, like I, I feel like there's a few of you out there that are just really gung ho about the new year and you're just like, you know, I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm not going to smoke anymore. I'm going to like exercise and I'm going to just change my diet and lose weight. And I feel like you're going to go too hard and you're going to burn yourself out. So I highly recommend that you take your time um, and baby step it. Just set small goals because otherwise you'll get burned out. Take it from me. I've done that. I go hard. I'm like, I'm all in. I'm doing this. I got it on my calendar. And then I burn out after like, I, my goal is always like 30 days every day working out, doing this. And yeah, I burn out usually after like day 20. So take it from me, baby step it. It's totally worth it. Spirituality. You could experience wishful thinking and getting caught up in a woe is me or poor me attitude, right? So it's that pity party thing. And, and it happens. Um, sometimes we can't help but feel sorry for ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't say, stay stuck in it and you're taking responsibility and accountability for what you're feeling. And you know that you are the one that can make positive changes. You may also be exploring new belief systems or taking a look at your beliefs. And you may also be exploring metaphysical things for this week. So lots of spiritual growth happening. So you might be dabbling into all sorts of amazing things just to grow, evolve, and expand your consciousness. That wraps up this week's intuitive messages. Uh, tonight's caller is Michelle in St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm, okay. How are you? I'm okay. I'm doing all right. How can I help you tonight? Um, well, I think no, I that, think that I'm, I'm just looking for some direction, honestly. Um, if, um, to see how, if I can help my son at all. Uh, and if there's any messages. It, um, I didn't hear the last part. If, if, if what, and if there's any messages. So the part right before the messages, I, I didn't hear. Uh, to see how to help my son, my oldest your, son. Oh, how to help your oldest son. Gotcha. Yeah. What, what, what is his first name? JD. Uh, whew. I feel like he's struggling. Um, I feel like he's got a lot of emotional stuff going on. Um, does that sound about right? Like, I just feel like he's very down on himself and. Yeah. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I don't know how much that you can help him through this situation besides mm -hmm. giving loving support and maybe giving him ideas for solutions. But I feel like he's in a situation where he just has a level of self-hatred that he's just sabotaging. He's making his life so much harder than it has to be. But there's nothing yeah. that you you can do about it, right? Like you just remind me of me, no, and, I, and I've been. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, he, well, uh, he was in the, he was in the navy, and uh, got a uh, boot camp, 
And ever since then, you know, he turned 18 and now he uh, just has no desire to leave his room. Uh, and I'm not really sure. I know he's depressed. He's had some stuff happen to him, you know, uh, but I don't know how to how to help him when he doesn't allow, you know. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's the problem is like he's he's just really depressed and down on himself and he's beating himself up. But I feel like something happened that contributed mm -hmm. to this. So it's like something happened and then that made him feel bad about himself. Right. Yeah. Um, he was abused uh, by my ex-husband. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I didn't know about it, uh, but it was, And because of that, I feel like when he went through boot camp, that mm -hmm. triggered some PTSD from his childhood. Right. And it's, it's really, really um, weighing him down big time and he is so depressed i i can see him just in his room not doing anything he's not socializing he's not interacting um did he get out of the navy did he get discharged yeah he was discharged um it's not honorable he he uh is allowed to re-enter but they did cancel his contract okay okay that's what i felt like so I feel like he's going to be okay. He will end up picking okay. himself up. Right now, you are mm -hmm. in a situation where all you can do is love him from a distance and let him know that you are there for him. But the more right. that you kind of try to help him, the more resistant he's going to be. I almost feel like right. he has to kind of just work through the depression himself because he's just so in his head. Oh my gosh, Michelle, like he's just so in his head. There's just nothing that you're going to be able to do. And I know that that feeling is so helpless because it's your son and you love him. I've been in that situation. Right. I, I can completely relate. Um, but I do feel like as long as he does reenlist, I think he can get mm -hmm. through it. And he'll, he'll be able to, I, what I feel is like he'll find his self-worth and he'll understand that he's not bad because for whatever reason, I think he feels like he's not a good human being. Hmm. And I think that comes uh, from okay. the abuse that he experienced. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So um. I do feel like he's going to be okay. Uh, my, I got a, I had a reading, I guess, a few weeks ago, and uh, my, uh, they said my father had come through, and he was talking about my son, um, and I, but I didn't get, you know, what it was that needed to be, <laughs> you know, what message he had about it, uh, or, you know, I didn't know. He said he was worried about him, um, and uh, I just, I never got anywhere further with that, and then he was. He said to call my grandmother, um, but I asked, you know, what do I do? <laughs> but I haven't, you know, got anything from that either. What, okay, so tell me your dad's first name so I can call him into my space. Uh, Wade. Okay, so... <laughs> um. He's feeling very fired up right now. Um, I feel like he's really upset and angry. Um, and I feel like, <laughs> I kind of feel like he's cussing uh, about your ex and the situation. Like I, he's using the word, would he say like, I'm not going to say it on air, but he would say SOB. <laughs> yeah, um, because my father uh, sided with my ex. Um, and my ex got custody of my daughter and then come to find out, um, you know, he had abused my son for 10 years and my father didn't believe me. Uh, right. and he died December 1st. And the first thing that came to my, my, my mind was 
and we were estranged. You know, we hadn't spoken because of the ordeal with my daughter and my ex-husband and him siding with my ex-husband. So it had been years since we spoke. And I talked to him um, two days before he passed. Uh, uh, we had a 32-minute conversation, and he still didn't didn't want to find any truth in it. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he he sees the truth now and he is really fired up um, and he's talking about your ex and that he's an SOB. And but he's also mm -hmm. kind of taking responsibility, saying that. He's basically saying it's his fault that you attracted him into your life because your dad was also an SOB is what he's saying. Like he says he wasn't a very good dad. Um, he was in and out a lot and then uh, he would shun me, you know, anytime my mother would do something or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, he, um, you know, he was just in and out. Uh, he, you know, uh, took on, a, you know, a wife and her three children and kind of left me you know you guys yeah you know yeah, I, um he he knows the truth now and he's he's taking partly responsibility but what he's saying is that he was in denial about your ex because that would mean that he would have to admit to himself that he was also a bad father. So there was a projection hmm. of blame onto you because he was actually taking it personally based on his perception that he feels like he abused you guys in his own way. Maybe not in the way that the abuse happened with your son, but he has, he was triggered by that and he was just projecting it onto you. He is saying sorry, um, but he's not really, he's not really expressing much more to me. Um, and then unfortunately I have to go. Uh, if you want to try to connect with me, you can send me an email. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.